And the narrations mention, their own historians mention that they were so scared that they felt that some any time some Turk will jump out of the floor. This is what Muslims were like once upon a time. They were innovative. They were dynamic. They were diverse. And this is why we had people like Muhammad Al-Fatih Rahimahullah. But you know, there were times obviously the situation was, wasn't very good. Certain times the Muslims found it very difficult. There was an occasion where the ships got through and Muslims lost a lot of men. So then the Sultan wasn't even spared. So the leaders came to Muhammad Al-Fatih and they said, Muhammad Al-Fatih, Sultan, this is all your fault because you listened to your teacher, Aq Shamsuddin. And this is why we are having these losses. So Muhammad Al-Fatih now sends a message to his teacher. He said, what do you say, Sheikh? What's your advice? He said, O oh, Sultan, man plans and Allah plans and Allah is the best of planners. The situation gets even worse. Then he goes himself and the guard is standing in front of the tent and he's telling the Sultan, even you can't go in. The, the Sheikh said, nobody can go in. Muhammad Al-Fatih moved the guard out of the way. He went into the tent. He goes into the tent. He sees the Sheikh, Aq Shamsuddin, Rahimahullah. He's in sajda. His turban has fallen off. His hair are on the floor. And for a very, very long time, He's in sajda and his eyes are flowing. And Muhammad al-Fatih walked out and he said, I swear by Allah, knowing that I have people like this in my ummah gives me greater pleasure even than the conquest of Constantinople. But the morale is down. So what does Muhammad al-Fatih do? Look at this, this is a leader. Muhammad al-Fatih now disguises himself and he goes into the Muslim ranks and he sees the state of the soldiers and then he takes off his disguise and then he gives a speech. He said, oh people, the morale is down. He said, oh people, don't you want to be from that army which the message of Allah said is the best of armies? And then la ilaha illallah, he points to the grave of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari radiallahu anhu. And he says, you see the companion of the message of Allah, over 80 years old and he wanted to conquer Constantinople. So what is the state in the city, Constantinople? The state in the city is even worse. Well, they're, they're being besieged. So then what they decide to do is to raise the morale. What they, what they do is that they have this image, Hodjetria, and it's Mary holding Jesus and pointing to him. You know, like nowadays you say, he's the man. She's pointing to him that he is the savior of the world. It was regarded as the most holiest relic in Byzantine. They believe that Saint Luke actually drew it himself. And they believe that as long as they have this, that they would never ever be conquered. So what they do on the 25th of May, they put it on a cart. They want to take it to all the sides of the city to bless all the sides of the city. So they take it and what happens is that it slips out of the hands of the carer and it falls on the floor. Eventually they manage to carry it, but then a torrent comes, the rain comes, and the procession is cancelled. Now they're panic struck. The next day, 26th of May, the Sophia Hagia is struck by light. This is a Christian historian mentioning this. Sophia Hagia, the largest church in, in the whole of Christendom, is struck by lightning. Now, Muhammad Fatih has one problem. Subhanallah. He's got his army on land, but he can't get his army on sea because you have 12 miles of wall. Eight miles is covered by water and, and four by land. So land is got, but he can't get to the water. Why? Because there's a passage called the Golden Horn. And the Golden Horn has a chain when you enter it. So what the Christians would do is when one of their armies or their ships would come through, they would lower it. When a, the enemy army would come, they would pull it tight and they would rip through the hull of the ship. So none of the Muslim ships could get through. So then Muhammad Al-Fatih pulls off one of the greatest moves ever done by any general. 
Muhammad al fatih in the darkness of the night, he cradled 67 ships out of the water. He has logs which are lined with grease on them, animal fat. And it's not flat. Some places it is 200 feet high. The enemies are all around him. You know when Muhammad al fatih said, if the hair on my body knew what I was going to do next, I would consign it to the fire. This is what he meant. In one night, Muhammad al fatih rahimahullah, brings 67 ships. And over the darkness of night, without under the nose of the enemies, without them knowing, and he brings them over to the other side. The Christians, they say that he surpassed Alexander the Great by doing this. Dokan says, this was a miracle that we never heard from before or never after. This was Muhammad al fatih Can you imagine? The morale is already down in Constantinople. And now Muhammad al fatih has bought 67 ships. Now they surround them. Now they're not only covering four miles, they're covering 12 miles. Then Muhammad al fatih says, he says to his army, he says, tomorrow you light three fires where you normally light one campfire. So they believe that we have reinforcements and then they attack. The morale is already down and the city is about to fall. And then Muhammad al fatih sends a message to Caesar. He says, oh Caesar, give us the city. We don't want any further bloodshed. So Caesar says, you know that cannot happen. And then Muhammad al fatih says his famous words. He says, either my grave or the throne. Either my grave or the throne. And then Muhammad al fatih says, he calls his army. He says, pray at night. La ilaha illallah. And then he gave a speech. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is close to giving us the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam promised 800 years ago. He said, when you enter the city, make sure you abide by the laws of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No women, no children. No non-combatant should be touched. Eventually, and the city falls. And Muhammad al fatih rahimahullah, now enters the city. And Muhammad al fatih enters the city later on in the day. The narration mentioned that he was, he was in total and utter humility. In front of him was his teacher, Aq Shamsuddin. And then he reaches the center of the city. And Muhammad al fatih he gathers his companions. A hundred and fifty thousand strong army this was. He's 23 years old at the time and he gives the talk. And he says, remember the words of the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You will surely conquer Constantinople. And you, the army will be the most wonderful of armies. La ilaha illallah. And then he walks towards the Sophia Hagia. Some of the Christians, they come out and they go on one knee and they sit in front of him one knee. And Muhammad al fatih says, stand up. I am nothing besides Sultan Muhammad al fatih Don't lower yourself for me. And then Muhammad al fatih they go to the Hagia Sophia. And this was unparalleled. This never happens before. He waited for them to finish their prayers. He said, go to your homes. You are all secure. And then that day, the Dhuhr Salah was in Sophia the Hagia. Now some say, oh, but why did Muhammad al fatih convert the church into a, 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 a masjid? Muhammad al fatih is on record as saying that I prefer that next to every masjid there's a church. So for the Christians, they go to the church and for the Muslims, they go to the masjid. But if you compare this, what happened on the other side of the Mediterranean, which was Spain, Every single masjid was turned into a church. Not one masjid was left. The Cordoba Masjid, according to many historians, was the largest masjid in the world once upon a time. It was larger than the Haramain. Muhammad al fatih converted some churches, but the vast majority he left them to be. So what happened in Christendom? Europe erupted. The Pope actually gathered a special tax to fight the Turks. Frederick III of Germany began to cry. 
the other leaders all united on to fight the Muslims. But subhanallah, they could not. Why? Because for the next 30 years, Muhammad al Fatih kept them on their back foot. He opened the doors to conquer Europe. For the next 30 years, nobody could advance towards the Muslims. Muhammad al Fatih closed the doors for the Europeans to come into the Middle East because Constantinople was the door. So now the Crusades had finished. But what he also did was that he opened the doors on the other side. Muhammad al Fatih would say regarding Constantinople before conquering, conquering it, he would say this city needs to be conquered because it is the center of evil and transgression. Let me tell you the other places that Muhammad al Fatih took. So 1453, he takes Constantinople, Serbia, 1453, Maria, 1460, Black Sea, 1461, Wallachia. When Muhammad al Fatih went to Wallachia to fight Dracula, he saw 20,000 men, women, and children in Muslims. Muhammad al Fatih was the one who destroyed Dracula. Bosnia, he took Bosnia in 1463. Kaman in 1473, Albania in 1478, Italy, 1481. The Pope was thinking about leaving Rome. That's how scared he was. When they reach Italy and they are ready to attack Rome and the Pope is thinking about running away, Muhammad al Fatih rahimullah passes away. 1481. The momentum Muhammad al Fatih created in fighting the Europeans lasted for two years hundred years you know Abu Muhammad al-Fatih was known by the Muslims as Abu al-Khayrat the father of good because where he lived and wherever he conquered was a land of prosperity and hope and peace he was the manifestation the true manifestation of the dream of Usman You just have to love history. I'm sitting here thinking, why did I dislike history back in the days? Because now I'm so eager to just find out what may have happened in the past and just to um, educate myself about past events. Otherwise, what I'm getting from this is that when it's your time, it's your time. If God wills that you're going to be successful now, then it's your time to be successful. If God says this is not your time, then it's not your time. Your time is still going to come because you just can't be one place uh, forever. Things are bound to change and you have to work into seeing things change in your life for you. But overall, God decides what happens in our lives, what success we endure and everything else. Let me know what you guys actually think about this amazing, 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 amazing video. And yeah, just love the history. Let me know what you think. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And of course, do not forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next reaction video.